Good morning, everybody. Um, sorry for the short delay this morning. I was trying to change some settings that I just could not find. Uh, some, um, some stuff for the sake of audio that I discovered after class yesterday. It could take a little bit of practice. You know, I decided to see what music teachers were doing on Zoom because uh, they have all the insights about Zoom and audio. Um, anyway, listen, could you guys do me a favor and just give me one minute? I, I expected to uh, have that taken care of before you, before 10 and it took more than I expected. So I'll be back in just one minute. <laughs> So um, I uh, discovered yesterday that Zoom does some sound correction as they see it to uh, you know, try to help with any kind of room noise during the actual meetings. And of course, if we're talking about that kind of material uh, and you're not actually hearing those elements, uh, that causes trouble. So it's not just the issue with the headphones yesterday, uh, but there were some Zoom specific issues. And I can see now that, uh, give me just one second, maybe I have one more, one more idea. Ah, some of this stuff I was only able to find when, um, uh, if a meeting's already running, apparently. All right, so I'm just taking a quick check. Let's see if that, uh, hmm. all right, let's see how this goes. One more minute. All right, we'll see if all that is. Uh, I found a very nice teacher of mine telling other teachers how to set up for audio. So I just tried a couple of those things. Um, guys, I want to tell you right away. Uh, where we're heading, and uh, but first, of course, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, I hope you guys got a kick out of Audacity. Um, I, I imagine people had uh, you know different takes on. It. Everybody seemed rather engaged yesterday, uh, as as this group usually does. Uh, but I imagine um, we had different takes on it, depending what our our, our, our uh, nearby plans are. You know, um, I I'm going to kind of jump in a little quicker than I did yesterday. Uh, I, I always take my time about it when introducing a brand new topic, but this is not brand new. I do want to say uh, just a quick couple of words though. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting that uh, BMCC has no audio major. Um, you know, it's a massive school. So, um, you know, I'm not really sure how those choices are made. Um, and yet I know that there are um, audio professionals in the uh, video and the multimedia parts of our school, um, people who live audio primarily. Uh, I myself, as you figured out, um, am a multimedia, a multimedia uh, artist. Um, so audio has got a special role for me. It's kind of mostly, if I'm not making music, um, it's mostly just making parts for video or animation. Um, so I want to um, just repeat a little bit from yesterday, and then I want to do some editing together again. Um, so yesterday it was simply me talking about editing, and we chose that as an opportunity to, to, to actually enhance the voice, uh, which I'd like to do more of. And then we added some music to it to, to get a podcast kind of vibe. Today, um, as the model, I'm thinking spoken word, like spoken word art, 
in um, spoken word performance art uh, using a poem, um, which I played for my wife earlier and she laughed herself silly. I didn't even know it was funny. <laughs> I think it's my dramatic recitation, my Shakespearean approach to it, but uh, that's okay if it's funny. Um, it's about rain, so we're gonna wanna bring in some weather and some thunder and uh, take it a little bit further than we did yesterday. But also today, what I'd like to do, uh, this is something that's very difficult to do in a group. Um, so I'm just gonna sort of introduce steps, uh, which is I wanna go over how you'd record for yourself. You know, it's actually rather easy. It's just not easy to do in a group environment. But I think most of you um, will engage it in, um, I, I wanna just say, do you have to do that? No, you don't. You don't, it's just some of your majors might be easier than scrambling around trying to find people who can act for you. Um, you know, for the record, there are actors all over the place willing to work for free. So it's not even, especially New York City. Uh, so that's not really the problem. Um, you know, the problem is just all the bother of it when you have a voice of your own. And um, if, you, if you could hear well, you'll hear what people can do. Um, you know, around you, family, friends, and, and figure out how to engage that. You know, by the way, um, you know, I worked on a movie, the, the biggest project I ever worked on. I was friends with one of the actresses and we were short just one line. Um, I wasn't the audio uh, engineer on that project, but you know, she was at my house. So I actually had her say the line right into the computer mic, uh, email it to the sound designer. So there was, it was a pretty interesting thing and he just sort of reworked it into his master plan and, and it worked out. So there's a lot we can do. Let me jump right into screen sharing. Um, it always helps me, um, you know, um, ground ourselves. All right, so I just want to say, so Audacity was yesterday's, on yesterday's menu and on today's, uh, but that's it. You know, um, it's not the larger part of our program for all the reasons I already mentioned, primarily that we don't have an audio major. Uh, but just one cool way to get in, you know, um, I do a little bit later today, just want to recommend one more time what other programs might interest you, depending on the kind of work you want to do, if you want to do this at all. All right, that's today. But notice this, I try to make sure no one can miss it. No, Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, what I, it's not a new software, it's new to us. So tomorrow we start to video edit. Um, you know, off the top of my head, I don't remember how many days um, I prepared for video editing. I, I, there is going to be a video pro, uh, homework, so uh, it would be wise to take tomorrow very seriously. Um, we'll make a small movie tomorrow. We'll make a slightly larger movie the next day. Um, and then I'll, I may do one of those assisted lab days like I did for the midterm while well, everybody could work on the video with me around. Uh, it's a lot of fun and I'm supplying all the footage. Um, so that'll be cool, but you wanna make sure you have Adobe Premiere Pro. So you might notice here, um, I just got to the point about how you do it because everyone in this class uh, was supposed to have loaded the Creative Cloud app. I wanna repeat something, because even though this is obvious to a few of you, it probably isn't to others, because you know, teachers and, and, and um, people in the field, they throw around words all the time. So let's just get really clear. Adobe's nothing but a company, you know, and they own a lot, right? And they own so many software packages that we depend on that they took a bunch of them that are typical of say graphic designers and motion designers. I'm gonna call everybody motion designers, you know, video, multimedia even, and um, animation. So they took this, that whole set and they called it Creative Cloud. They have other programs you have to buy separately, but they have a chunk, real large chunk in what they call Creative Cloud. So most of you guys kind of connected to Creative Cloud uh, for the duration of the semester, uh, beautifully because of Adobe's generosity. Um, for us in the summer. Uh, boy, I have no idea what I'm gonna do next in the fall. If I have to teach online and Adobe doesn't do that, is CUNY prepared to make students buy it? Anyway, that's my issue, not yours. So if you have Creative Cloud, right, that means you have practically another program. I'm just gonna call it an app to be fair about it. You know, we think of apps as small programs. So I'm gonna use that common way of using it. Creative Cloud has its own app. 
So I just want to say something. You know, sometimes, you know, if you look clear closely, up here on the Mac in the top right, you'll see a little uh, icon for Creative Cloud, which I've always had, and mine has disappeared. Why it's not up here? Usually I'll just click it if I want to load a new program or update a new program. You should check up here. You can roll over them slowly, just sort of leave the mouse, hopefully see what they are. This is Zoom, this is, is this Creative Cloud? Now there's a backup from Google. I don't even know what this one is. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, just to be a good example, is I'm gonna search for Creative Cloud. So if you're on Windows, you'll search Windows style. If you're on Mac, there's several ways to search. I'm just gonna click this, this little magnifying glass on the top right called Spotlight. And I'm gonna write Creative Cloud because I already loaded it. Creative Cloud app, it says. But I could have gone into applications, but I'm just gonna hit it. So if you had the icon up top, there it is, just showed up, right? So usually it's up there. Mine just recently disappeared. I just click it to open the same window. All this does is it shows me what's available. Whoops. What I already have. Let me just move this stuff around. What's available, what I already have. If it says open, that means you already loaded it and it's current. If it says update, that means there's an even newer version, which you still get for free. I wouldn't click them all. There's a lot of software. You know, we don't, we really don't need much of these, but you'll notice Premiere Pro over here, right? If you loaded it yesterday, since it was on yesterday's handout, this says open. You could open it the usual ways, you know, go into your applications. Maybe you put a shortcut somewhere or you could open it from here. We're not doing this today. I'm just talking about tomorrow. I want to just point out one more thing. You know, later this semester, we're going to be using this one. And it will, it'll look more like these. It'll say install if you've never installed it. So I just want to come back and just say a couple quick things. Whenever you're using Adobe products that are part of the Creative Cloud suite, you open the Creative Cloud app to work with them. See if there's an update. There's only three choices, right? So I'm just going to show you one more time about that. There is install which always comes first. There may be update because they update a couple times a year. By the way, you don't have to click update. If you loaded something last week and there's already an update, it's up to you if you want to bother. You know, if it's been six months, I'd probably click update. And then lastly, open. If the thing's installed, in fact, it's current, you just click open. So anyway, this is all really more for tomorrow because I don't want to spend any time in class doing it. It's sort of on you guys to find uh, Adobe Premiere. This is just designed to help. I want to ask you before I, I drop this subject, and please don't be shy. The class is generous. Even if other people know something that you, this time you don't, they won't mind you asking. Does anybody have any questions for me about Adobe, Creative Cloud, or the Creative Cloud app, or any of the programs in there? You know, I, I think I got a core group of people who are just more used to computers. It kind of worries me some of the people who don't show up live, uh, they may get A's, you know, but some of them might just be shy and I won't even know if they're having problems. I check my email every day. All right, so enough of that. I don't need to keep Creative Cloud app even if I open a program. I want to just mention, if you, on my computer, I have this dock down here. Let me just move this stuff out of the way. Uh, way at the bottom. Uh, which is, you know, a Mac, you know, Mac thing. And I, I, I put all my good programs down here. I don't usually open, uh, here's Premiere, for example. I don't usually go to Creative Cloud app to open. It's up to you. Let me drop that subject, at least till tomorrow. And um, let's talk more about whatever's left. So the official due date for the midterm um, is um, tomorrow. I know I've been repeating that. A little bit too often. Um, I check to, to see uh, how many people I've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. By the way, feel free to peek right now to see if you're in there, if you expect it to be in there. You know, and you're not seeing your name, you should probably drop it in there again. Right? Um, so there they are. It's a small selection. I really don't care if they come in as late as midnight tomorrow. My deadlines are always at midnight. I just want to say one last thing, especially for uh, people who are going to watch this on the video later. I give extensions rather generously uh, in summers, but 
particularly in a class like this, which is an online class. But I would like to hear from you. I, I want to know that people haven't disappeared because they feel left out from doing it through videos. If I had better ways to include all you guys out in YouTube land, I would. I'd greet you by name, in fact. So anyway, let me know if you need an extension. All right, let me get back to the handout then. Again, everybody, please use this email address. I do check them both, the, the regular BMCC email, but I check Morning. Yours. Yes. Morning, everyone. Morning. Oh. Uh, I would uh, like it very much if everyone who has a camera can put your camera on. That's rather strange. <laughs> There's two iris in the room. And, and listen, guys, uh, even those of you who like me, one iris is enough. You can trust me. Andy, that's got to be you, huh? There you go. Thank you. Wow, you're gonna take two of my classes at once. All right, anyway, let me- um, No, I think I switched screens and I don't know what, where, what you know, tab um, is, but I'll find it. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> All right. Okay. And of course the videos are on the same link as always. All right. If you didn't get today's assets, please get them now. I'm gonna do that. So I'm clicking today's assets. And most people realize you can get them from our homepage also. And I'm gonna ask you to get right to those assets. If you haven't, I know some of you guys are so used to this, you do it before I arrive. So here I am in downloads, as you know, I never really work on that folder in downloads. I'm gonna move it to the desktop. There's probably even, there's better ways even, but I'm going to the desktop. I'm gonna to switch to the desktop here, find today's folder and open it. So this is ready for me to use. Before I start talking about this stuff though, let me just peek, make sure I'm not skipping anything. So, you know, about earbuds or headphones, there's just no way to do a good job at enhancing audio without proper speakers. There's just no way. And, you know, yesterday, uh, Jeremy helped me realize that you guys can't hear me if I plug in my headphones. And so, you know, by the way, I watched yesterday's video and, uh, you know, some of it is very satisfying. Some of it's really not as you're waiting for me with my headphones on and not hearing a thing. So I'm gonna to try to be a little more succinct when I have to do my side of it. Um, but, you know, let's be clear. I, I really can't show someone how to raise a bass if there's no bass. And most computer speakers that are built in have very little bass. That, that's just one example. So today I'm gonna to try to be smarter, un unplug often. If you're using Bluetooth earbuds on a Mac, please read this. I apologize to Bluetooth people on Windows. I imagine it's pretty similar. I'm not gonna bore everybody. Yesterday, no one had an issue with this. So I'm gonna drop it. But again, in class, uh, more and more people were bringing in Bluetooth headphones and earbuds, and it took a little adjusting to get everyone's speakers to work in the physical classroom. All right, I wanna back up just for one second. I promise I'm gonna to get to the business today much quicker, but I just wanna say something about this part, sound editors compared. You know, I wanna be very frank about something. You know what I'm most jealous of? I'm jealous of Pro Tools users. Now, I use um, Logic, which I mentioned, uh, which I love for making music. You know, I uh, play a few instruments. I'm not saying a master, but I do play a few instruments. So I multi-track my own music and I use uh, other, other stuff that comes from Logic, which is beautiful. So a lot of the programs you hear about are, you know, really driven by musicians. Audacity is pretty uh, open ended. So I really like that about it. The only thing that I like about Pro Tools and similar programs is that I'm not currently using any program uh, that does this is that it lets you bring in your video. So, you know, when you work in video, um, people talk about the final cut, uh, but sometimes they'll just say the picture edit. They want, they want the picture to be cut together before it goes into sound. You know, young video editors, which we're doing again, starting tomorrow, often like working to music. They have almost a, a, an MTV way of looking at it. They're gonna cut to rhythms and stuff. But in, in real stuff, you don't usually do that. Uh, you know, the story needs to get told and the music there augments it. So, you, you know, the, the video, the visual video editor does his job and then they send it off to the sound people. One of the main reasons is the sound people don't wanna do unnecessary sound design and then just to have it cut out. 
So they want the whole thing cut first. I want to mention one odd thing that's been on my mind. How do they do these late releases of the director's cuts? I don't know if you, any of you know the Lord of the Rings movies, but um, you know, after they got famous, the director's cuts came out. They're a full hour longer than the original movies sometimes with a full hour of, of sound design and music, literally a score. The musician had to write a whole hour's worth. That, uh, at what point did that happen? You know, and by the way, if you listen closely, the music's not nearly as good. The sound design's not nearly as good on the extra material that's not from original movies. So I really have no idea how they pull that off. With scraps, do they rehire the, the musicians and everybody else to add material? I don't know, let's drop it. I just wanna say, if video's your thing, at some point you wanna look at Pro Tools. There was a Mac program that was cheaper that was called um, Soundtrack that I don't know if it still exists, but it was also really good. All right, I'm gonna shut up now. That's only if you need to see the video and design to it. All right, let me just drop that whole subject. I wanna uh, start at the beginning. Um, I just wanna mention why these are so important to me. Um, if you use the play button in Audacity, it will rewind to the last spot you played every time. And why it does that is you wanna keep on listening sometimes to the same part. So it sees play very differently than what we're used to, which is play from here. So we've been using the X key and it sounded like everybody had good luck with the X key yesterday as both play and pause. It's very different than uh, hitting your space bar or clicking the play button. I wanna repeat about zooming in. We used it a lot yesterday, command one, to zoom in on the timeline, especially right at the beginning when we found our noise. I'm gonna do that again. You're gonna need that. And Command F is handy when you get lost. Show me everything. Command F. All right, we'll come back to this. I'll remind people as we need it. So I wanna say that all these yellow ones and some others are the same as yesterday. It's the kind of thing that needs to be repeated. So we're gonna go over that stuff. But you'll notice we're gonna enhance the vocal part first and then add rain and thunder. So let's open Audacity if you haven't already. I'm gonna put my browser away, <clears throat> clean up a little bit, and open Audacity. So if anyone's arriving late, um, make sure you have your assets where you can get to them. Today's assets, class 13. Uh, there are 23 classes, so we're well over the halfway mark, uh, by the way, right? Uh, you need those assets or Audacity's gonna be useless. All right. I want to point something out about this window that Audacity opens early. It's interesting that it offers you these quick ways uh, to, to get to help. I've, I've visited all of these. They're all useful. Sometimes I'm going to right away just click the manual one that says view online. I'm going to do it now just because I want you to see it. So this is pretty cool. This is the online manual. And it's got lots of cool stuff like uh, getting started and even really good tutorials and all kinds of stuff for people who can't get enough of this. You know, I want to say though, of course, you could have just opened a tab and Googled Audacity Manual. But what I do more often than that, or is I'll do Audacity and a feature that I want to know more is about, about no, no, want to learn more about, because this is a popular one, Audacity Noise Reduction. And I can go to any of the other companies that support it because there really are quite a lot, but I can go right to the manual too. So I just want to mention that. No one should feel obliged to do that. I just want to point out that there really is a lot of support for this program. Let me put this away again. All right, I don't need this though, so I'm just going to click OK for now. All right, yesterday uh, we had a small issue that uh, Marissa discovered and I wanna share it with everybody. She uh, opened the first track differently. Uh, one or two people did that, I had the feeling. And it wound up giving her some saving trouble, which um, I had really thought she would have gotten away easily <laughs> with. But since that didn't go so smoothly, let's be a little bit careful about this next step today. So to start, if you're not gonna record, which I'm gonna talk about later, right? That means you're gonna open up a track to get started. So let's go to the file menu, import, import audio. 
So as always, you're going to have clear folders for every project. By this point in the semester, everyone could see the value of that. I put mine uh, for today, the class 13 assets, I put it on the desktop. So I'm going there. I'm, now I'm going to open class 13 assets. This is the desktop on my desktop. And I want to point out that we're going to start with this one called Rain Poem Unedited. Now this time I want to just mention before we open it, what I've gotten here uh, after we're done getting the vocals ready, which is this one that I just mentioned, Rain Poem Unedited, we're going to add Rainstorm. And if that goes well, we're going to add a little additional thunder. This is just one finished sample of that combination for anyone to listen to later. Uh, I'm really picky. So every time I do this, I like the newest one best. This, this one's not so new, but I'm going to accept it. Let's just click, make sure you get the unedited one vocals and click open. All right. The first thing that I'd like to do is I want to point out that you can kind of see where the words begin. So what is this stuff? So the cursor's at the beginning. And if it wasn't, I just click this little uh, rewind button. And then I'm going to click X. Now my headphones are not plugged in and I'm going to, listen guys, I do need some help from you today because a lot of um, this course is newish because of the online component. I want to ask you how good this sounds <laughs> on your end. So please don't play it on your end just yet. You could put in your headphones like John just did, if you like, because you know, you'll have some real fidelity. I'm curious how good it sounds on your side. Uh, when I'm playing it. So let's give it a minute. And we, we're going to go back to yesterday's system. I just want to check something out. So here it comes. Ah. Click it inside there. Last night, the rain spoke to me slowly, saying what joy to come falling out of the brisk cloud to be happy again in a new way. First off, how was the volume? All right, good, all right. Now, I wanna ask you, if, if you had headphones on, were you hearing some dynamic range? Were you hearing some bass? Were you hearing, I know we could do better and we will, but were you hearing some range? Yeah, I was hearing yeah. the whispers and the highs and the static in the background. Excellent, that's what I wanna know. You know, because when I unplug my headphones naturally, I hear garbage. It sounds like I'm listening to someone's cell phone. You know, I, I personally can't even handle it, listening to that level of quality. Uh, it, it just doesn't work for me. All right, so this is good though. We got a way to do it, excellent. I wanna go right to the noise part of the show. So the first thing we did was get rid of that noise. So let me just put this aside. And so what I'm talking about is this area. I want you to see something. I'm highlighting some noise now, and I'm just gonna click the play button. So this is why the play button does this. When I click play again, it'll just let me listen again. And if you look closely in the smack middle, there's something worse than noise. I'm going to let that be because uh, you're only going to hear it if you're listening really close. All right, no big deal. Could everybody highlight your noise? Now, I, you know, I, let, me, let me go a little bit slower for a second. Click in the noise. And then I want you to zoom in with me. I want to get used to that. So that's either command one or control one. And you can see you're zooming in like crazy. This is the first word. Last night. Right, so that's not what I'm talking about. joy to come falling. So I'm gonna get back to the beginning here. You wanted to click in your noise and you can see here there's lots of little nicks along the way. All right, once you've zoomed in, I'd like you to highlight a lot of that noise. Try not to be cheap and highlight too little. You want most of it. And I wanna be clear about that term Yesterday, I didn't really talk about it much. It's hiss. It's, uh, it's mostly hiss that we're looking for. I, I don't want you to look at it as a way to get rid of noise, like the sound of your neighbor's air conditioner, you know, or, 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 or the, the truck. You know, that's not really what it's for. It's mostly for hiss. So um, I want to say something to anyone in here who thinks they're going to record themselves later today. Give yourself, when you hit record, which I'll talk about later, don't speak for about two, three seconds. You'll see that I got three seconds of noise. You'll have enough to use as the sample. And that's what, I'll, that's what I do. All right, so make sure that you've highlighted your noise and join me, effect menu. 
noise reduction. Well, this is an odd feature. It's wonderful, but it's odd because the first step is click get noise profile. All that does is tell the computer what noise is, but you haven't made a change yet. So the next thing you want to do is affect the entire timeline. Maybe this is a good time for us to use command F or control F, which means fit in window. They don't even have it here. All right, so that's a good shortcut. All right, could you highlight the whole timeline? Because we don't want to take noise out of just this part. We want to take it out of the whole track. So command A. <clears throat> All right, let's go back to the same exact feature under the effect menu. Effect, noise reduction. Now, this is a little bit controversial here. What should these numbers be? So I want to say a little bit more about it than I said yesterday. But first, I'm bringing up my handout for a minute. So we're talking about this. The defaults, at least on the last version, were 12, 6, and 3. So I'm going to come back to Audacity here. And I could start with those numbers, 12, 6, and 3. But I want to tell you something for anyone who's pickier than that. The manual has a lot to say about how you use these three options. But one thing that's interesting is the best plan would be to get noise reduction to the lowest number that does the job. Um, I've noticed that if this number's too high, there's a kind of distortion that it leaves. It gets rid of the noise, but it makes this tiny bit of distortion um, that sounds to me like flange. It, it's a special effect often for guitars and things, but it does it to the voice a little bit. I was playing with this earlier today, and uh, m this particular audio worked rather well, even at a noise reduction of nine slightly lower number, it had a little less uh, distortion. I'm going to click preview. And I could still Last hear the night, noise. The rain spoke to me. But if I went too high, it's silent. It'll, it should be silent. Last but night, the rain spoke to me. I don't know if you could hear it. It's dead silent, but I do hear a little bit of distortion. So I don't know. I'm going to say go between 9 and 12. I'm going to stick with uh, nine today. All right, this would take play. Let's click OK. That little bit at the beginning should be flat right now. And if you rewind it, right, and play, I'm going to use my X key. No sound. Last night, the rain spoke to me slowly, saying what joy. And honestly, I'm getting a tiny bit of a hiss at the beginning, just a tiny bit. Uh, distortion. I'm going to, uh, distortion. I'm going to click preview. So, um, I am going to give you a minute, uh, so you're not hearing two audio at once, uh, if you haven't already made your decision, um, to reduce the noise. All right, it's a short term thing. It's not really the time today to go playing with the three sliders. If you did want to learn more about it, again, do a search, Audacity Noise Reduction, or look through the manual. Because um, each of each feature of the hundreds and hundreds of features has options. I love this one because really, you're gonna have noise if you're recording at home. You know, um, Sal had mentioned that idea of making a soundstage with pillows. Um, which is pretty darn interesting. I, I suppose that could work. You'd have to unplug everything that's in your room, you know. It could yeah, be. Professor, I yeah. found the video about the YouTube. Um, yeah, um, maybe last um, in the when we finish the class, I will show you. Yeah, if you want to share it with anybody, you could chat it. You know, you could just put the address in the chat. You know, I think I found it though. What you said interested me, and I did some hunting after class. And I did find a fabulous, a uh, couple fabulous videos on the subject of trying to soundproof your room and yeah. other Yeah, you know the video, I can't share the video because it's different language. It will be like, oh. um, yeah, then maybe at the end I can uh, show you and translate. So uh, what's your major? Uh, uh, multimedia. Multimedia. This is the, this is the second uh, semester. 
Is it great? So I just want to say to you that like it, that's going the extra mile by a long shot. Um, I don't think most multimedia people are going to be making sound stages at home, but I don't know. I mean, one attraction for multimedia people is often they're just restless. You know, I'll spend sometimes three, four months just making music and then um, spend months working on a movie. So like if you're that kind of person, I could see, I could see doing that. All right. Let me back into it though. I, I do appreciate the thinking. All right, let's get back. So I'm gonna put this aside and uh, I just wanna get a look at the handout. So the next thing we're gonna do is normalize. You know, I gotta say, remember normalize controls volume peaks uh, mostly to make sure that nothing gets too loud so that again, so that it distorts. We wanna avoid distortion. Let's go ahead and try it. I do wanna say though, I'm very interested in experimenting with when I normalize like when is the best time to normalize? Still though, with volumes this low, I don't feel like I could make good decisions. So I'm gonna ask you to highlight the entire track and go back to the effect menu. I'm gonna to go to effect menu, normalize, and this is currently set to minus two. Uh, yesterday we had a discussion, some people uh, seem to have their computer set already to minus two, possibly some to minus one, uh, people go all the way down to minus six, and it's just about how much there is. You, you'll, you know, one thing I probably should have said yesterday is how loud should your volume be on your computer? Well, one, it shouldn't be up all the way, and it shouldn't be way down either. I would recommend smack in the middle, which I think is a very popular uh, way to set it. You're trying to find an average of how your listeners are going to have it, so you're not fooled. So this is just the plain old volume on your computer I'm talking about now. So I'm gonna click preview for a minute. Last night, Lorraine spoke to me. And that mm, sounds a little low to me, but I'm gonna trust it because I wanna see the waveform. I'm gonna click okay. Now, I don't want these coming very close to the ceiling. This looks pretty good to me. Um, if I don't like it, I could try command Z and go back and try a different number. So this might be a nice way to get to know normalize. I'm going to set it to minus one. And I'm just going to okay it because right now I'm just looking at the waveform. I am closer to the ceiling now. So it's going to be a little bit louder the closer you get to zero. Uh, you don't want to go over zero. Uh, and I think this is going to be pretty good. I'm going to just bring my playhead back. Last night, the rain spoke to me slowly. And I'm avoiding using my headphones too much today, but typically I'd be plugging, I'd be in them all the time. All right. How is everybody all right? So those are powerful features. And that, you know, if you're finding them easy, fantastic. Don't underestimate their power though, right? All right, so next we wanna move on to EQ, equalization. And this really, is one of the most radical differences you're going to make. The EQ on this particular recording is terrible. The sound quality is just awful, right? So um, I want to check something with you. And I'm just being extra thorough today. My headphones do not affect how well you hear my voice now, does it? John, you want to turn on your mic? Yes. Yes, it does. Really? It does. It, yeah. It, my, is my voice coming in really low? Uh, low and staticky. Really? Yeah. So um, about the low, let me take that off. About the staticky, I turned off some of Zoom's sound enhancement features, right? So that uh, when we're listening to actual audio tracks, you guys are not hearing a falsely cleaned up version. So that I learned from a musician yesterday. So uh, right now, do you hear static? I unplugged my headphones, no? So I know, a little bit of hit and miss. All right, that's fine. Let's uh, go on to EQ, we're gonna do our best. Um, I'm gonna put my headphones, you know, I'm gonna keep, geez, I'm gonna put them in for a minute. I'm gonna see if there's a way I could do this, these set of methods and just talk a little louder <laughs> in the meantime. All right, I'd like you to highlight your whole track. So again, click in it, Command A or Control A. Let's return to the effect menu and go right to graphic EQ. I'm thinking it's probably setting the EQ the exact same way you had it as yesterday. 
And, you know, frankly, that's sort of reasonable because it's the same guy's voice recording through the same system. But I don't want to lean on it. So I'm going to ask you to click flatten. So yesterday we did a quick experiment, which was to see what would happen if we exaggerated bass first. I'd like to do that one more time. So I'm going to ask you to take maybe the left side third of sliders and bring them all the way to the top. You don't have to count. Now, when you're ready, I'll be quiet. Right now, I got it. I'm listening on my end. My headphones again. I'm getting a deep, luscious bass. Now, I like that, except for the fact it's almost like an earthquake, you know? Uh, I don't want to sound like I'm from some other world. I just want it to be rich. Yes, John? I don't know what you did to your headset, but you fixed whatever issue you were just having. Or did you unplug your headset? I unplugged it. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm plugging it in. <laughs> so, you know, I got to say, to do good demos, I have to plug it in. Otherwise, I'm guessing. So I plug it in, and then right away, I'm plugging it. I'm taking it out. That's my new plan. You know, really, I, uh, I have to talk to audio people that I know who teach online now <laughs> and ask them what solutions they're using, because they, they got to have it rough. All right. All right, so that was interesting. It was too much. So if you want to adjust it, adjust it now. I don't think anything should be way up at the ceiling. Now, you know, I'm creating a curve. It, I'm not going to tell you that that's the world's best idea. I am going to tell you that I like the way it sounds. I've had luck with it. And the reason I'm doing that is I don't want to really separate the bass completely from the, the flatter midtones that my voice produces. So I'm trying to have it, you know, um, as it gets closer to the middle quality of my voice, not the lows and not the highs, just this kind of stuff smack in the middle that it doesn't create a gap between that and the bass. Let me just plug in again. And I'm previewing for myself for a moment, if you don't mind. I'm unplugged. All right, folks, part of what's gonna make you good at this or not is how sensitive your ears are, right? I had one student, the guy, his ears were wildly advanced. You know, really, uh, I don't know what his life was like outside of school, but he could hear the, new, the extreme nuances. I was just like, maybe you should go into sound designing, really. So some people can't hear the difference at all, and that might just be exposure, especially for your generation, since you don't really have the power to change bass freely with the type of equipment most of us own, you know, when listening to music. I'm going to go ahead and play the same game with the treble, though, all the high notes. And one of the things we discovered yesterday is treble has a lot to do with uh, the sharp, crisp quality that you want from sound, but it also has a lot to do with more hiss. So there's a negotiation that has to go on. I'm going to exaggerate them and bring the right side all the way up to the ceiling. And again, I'm, I'm not counting today. I'm just doing what looks roughly like a third. And I'm going to plug in for a second so you won't hear me very well for a moment. You could hear your own. So I wound up getting very, very uh, sharp, sharp highs, Woo, but it brought an old kind of hiss and it sounded like my voice was like next to symbols of someone's drums, practically, you know, vibrating that high pitch kind of quality. I got overboard. I happen to know just from experience that these way on the right are going to contribute the most to the hiss. So I'm going to take that down. And... Uh, I just want to say something to my family out there. You guys all right out there? Do you need me? No. I got a very nice class, so they're supportive. <laughs> all right. <laughs> family outside the door. Um, I hope you don't mind. I have to preview for myself. I don't want to give people bad advice.
I'm getting a pretty nice dynamic range. I'm getting a lot of hiss again. So I have to make a choice. Am I going to lower this? Do I want to noise reduce again? I'm really afraid of doing that. You know, you might remember back in Photoshop, we were using a burn tool to darken things. And I briefly showed you its twin, the dodge tool, which lightens things. And I said to you at the time, don't go back and forth. Don't darken, then lighten, then darken, then lighten. You're going to get mush, you know? Um, this is sort of a similar argument with noise reduction. I don't want to repeat that step if I can avoid it. Anyway, I'm going to just adjust it a little bit. I do like it by and large. I just don't like that one quality about it. So I'm going to take it down just a bit. I do want those crisp pies. And um, I'm not saying too much right now about the midtones. The uh, midtones, you tell the visual guy, the, the middle part of. Um, pitch and, and that, that element of my voice because I'm happy with it already. All right. If you want to do a test, I'm going to um, be quiet for like 60 seconds. Uh, if you're still adjusting, when you're happy, you're going to click OK and keep it. I hope everybody heard me well enough. <laughs> that was an invitation for you to preview freely on your own. I'm going to take it. So I click OK. All right. Looks like my sound's still all right. I'm coming right before this one peak here. I just want to see something. It jumped to the red, but it didn't get up to zero. As long as it doesn't hit that, I'm OK. That's what it said. So my volumes are still good. All right. Vanish. All right. Don't worry about interrupting me, by the way. You turn on your mic if you got a question. I haven't been so good with the chats lately. Give me a second to um, there we go. Jeremy's got handy advice for me <laughs> about dealing with that. Jeremy, I'm going to read your advice a little bit later, but I could uh, focus on it. Um, you, you guys are big contributors. I really appreciate it. You know, I just got to say to you, you know, briefly, I'll keep it very short. So I had this talented group of students last semester, but they refused to say a word. It was the loneliest semester. And then uh, one of them actually wrote me an email at the end of the semester. You know, we were having a great time. I know we were dead silent, but it was like Friday and it was a four hour class. Everybody was like shot and we really appreciate it. It was very kind, but it's so much more fun <laughs> when we have a little bit of warmth going even through Zoom. All right, let me get a look at the handout together. All right, so EQ all the way, very important. I'm skipping compression. Now, listen, I don't want anyone to feel robbed about this, but it really is about like sudden pops and, and large sounds. It's not really about the overall quality of it. As I said, uh, as a, you know, musicians on stringed instruments, particularly basses, uh, there's something called GAC that sometimes happens that compression can help squeeze. I don't think it's going to help us on this one. So again, if anyone really must know about compression, which is, uh, often part of this process, uh, you'd have to do some research. It's kind of a complicated one. I want to jump over it. You notice in my handout, it says possibly normalize again, or there's another similar feature called amplitude under the effect menu. But I believe that our sound values are still good. So I want to move forward. I'm not ready for fading or anything because I want to add some sounds to the voice. So let me get back into audacity. This looks good. Now, I want to say to you, of course, if you were working alone, um, you should listen to that whole track, which can be very tedious if it's long. This is not very long. It's short. But you should listen to the whole thing. Um, um, and it's okay if it makes you laugh. <laughs> I was trying to do a dramatic recitation, but some people find it funny. <laughs> Maybe I'm not much of an actor. Let's talk about augmenting this. So this is um, a, a poet uh, I was recently introduced to, um, Mary Oliver, who's in love with nature and um, 
very spiritual person in love with nature. And this one's about rain. So I'm choosing a storm. Now you could, this storm is loud. So let's see what happens. All right, let's get back into Audacity and uh, I have to click back in since I'm moving around. And I'm gonna ask you to go to the file menu and import a new track. So file menu, import, import audio yet again. And it should take you to today's folder, but if it doesn't, please be meticulous. Make sure you're getting there yourself. So I'm talking about rainstorm first. Um, I want to tell you something um, just strategically for what we're going to do. The rainstorm audio has thunder in it. So we don't necessarily need the other audio that, whoa, got a little collapse in here. <laughs> um, the, the extra thunder, but we're going to use it a little later because I think you're going to want it. Let's open Rainstorm. I want to point out that when you start adding tracks, the program starts feeling a little bit more ungainly. Uh, I'll often readjust where it is. I might even widen the program up, uh, you know, where, wherever it lets me try to expand it. I do want to point out, though, when you click in a track that includes both the left and right side of the stereo, and it gets a yellow frame around it so you know what track you're in. So right now, uh, you'll see it, when you click in a track, in the upper left, it tells you the name. So this is Rain Poem. So this is the one we were just working on. Right beneath it, I've got Rain Storm. Now, if I'm gonna focus on one of them, I could go to the bar in between the tracks and move it. And I could even go between the right and left speaker and move that too, if it's helpful. Right now, I could see what I need to see. So one thing you could see right off the bat is that the second track is very, very long, right? The first one's only 30 seconds and this one's a minute and a half. We wanna cut off a bunch. I'm not gonna cut off the whole extra minute because I might wanna use some of this, which looks like a thunderclap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the track in question, Rainstorm. I'm gonna start away on the right and I'm gonna highlight, but I'm not gonna come right up to the finish line. I'm gonna give a little bit of extra there. So I get a little bit of, uh, you know, maybe another 10, 15 seconds, judging by these numbers. And then I'm gonna just press delete. Easy enough. I gotta say though, there's gonna be more than one issue. Anytime you see a waveform that large cut smack in the middle, or frankly, any waveform, it's gonna be a very awkward stop. Can't let somebody do that, stop. <laughs> Even if I wanted to try it, I would start to have it fade out so by the time. <laughs> you could soften it. I don't wanna work on the right side yet. I wanna just check out the left. Could everyone bring their playhead back to the beginning? So I'm gonna go back up here and use the same button I've been using called skip to start. And my uh, headphones unplugged, and I'm going to listen on my end with you guys for a moment. Last night, the rain was All right, I think we agree, we'd have to agree that that track is just crazy loud. Now, I want to point something out real quickly that interests me. Remember the envelope tool from yesterday? You know, we were carefully uh, changing the volumes in Amazing Grace to make it work, but I'm not going to use that tool unless I need to uh, delicately adjust different parts of one track. In this case, I'd rather take the volume of the entire track down. I want to say something to you guys very directly. You cannot believe how many opinions there are about how to do that one simple thing. I just want to lower the volume of one track. And there's really long tutorials on um, the different philosophies. I want to show you one way that's kind of very simple. So I'd like you to notice, the, make sure you're on the right track, the one called Rainstorm. And on the left, you'll notice it's got two sliders. The one that says left and right is exactly what you think it is, right? That's you know controlling the stereo, uh, which we're not going to get involved with in this particular class. The one above it, though, is called gain. Now, on the simplest, simplest level, one might say that gain is volume, right? 
but I really got to be honest with you. That's not precisely true. Uh, musicians, for example, have on their amplifiers a volume knob and a gain knob. So clearly they can't be precisely the same, you know. And again, that's one of those subjects that gets really heady and for us rather impractical. If you want to lower the volume, go ahead, use the gain slider. Now you've got to put your headphones on for this one if you want any good quality. If you're willing to wing it today or you don't have headphones today, then you just judge by your computer speakers. Right. I'm going to plug mine in for a moment. And as we already know, uh, you won't hear me so well for a moment. So this is my gain slider. I'm not seeing any visual reaction when I drag it to the left, but I'm going to pa start playing. And while it plays, I went way down. If I put my, I'm um, sorry, unplugged. All right, if I put my, it's minus 29 decibels. So that's a, a measure of loudness, a measure of amplitude, minus 29 decibels. And you might not agree with me. Um, a quick word of artistic differences, All right? Uh, let's say I've got characters in the forest and they're not talking. You know, they're hanging out by the bubbling brook and there's birds chirping and leaves rustling in a breeze. I might play up that bubbling brook, you know, because it's got a certain feeling and nobody's talking. So I can, might exaggerate it. What, what a friend of mine calls hyper real sound. You know, that sound, he's gonna exaggerate it uh, because there's no competition with a conversation. But in this case, it's all about this monologue. So I went very, very low and I can't judge by what I see. The only thing I wanna add for uh, people interested in the highest quality they can get, I, I might've considered normalizing it before I did that, you know, just to get it to reasonable volumes first and not assume that they were good. They looked good because none of them came, none of them peaked near the ceiling. So I, I didn't do that. Do you like your mix so far? The relationship? Okay, I think what we could, yes, Marissa, sure. I don't feel like I have um, static in your voice once you start speaking. Yeah. Like all the noise from before your voice comes in is gone, but as soon as you Oh, really? It, so, yeah. You know what you might have done? Because this is a mistake that I've made. Um, a couple, sometimes I'll come here, right? Highlight some noise go to the noise prof profile, click it, mm -hmm. come back, forget to highlight the whole track. Okay. So all I did was flatten out the noise at the beginning. Now your noise profile is still in memory. So you should be able to highlight that track right now. Okay. Remember, make sure you get the right track, right? You know, the voice one. And yeah. then just go back to effect uh, noise reduction. And since you don't need to click get noise profile, you just click okay. Just make sure that you highlight it between getting the profile and saying yes. Okay. That's probably what happened. And I know that because I've made the same mistake. Uh, probably, <laughs> thank you. So listen, I wanna say something about the length of the rainstorm. You know, again, if you were working alone, you wanna be really sensitive. So you would really listen closely. And then as it reached the conclusion, whatever the end of the poem is, you'd listen to what does the atmosphere doing and, and make yourself a dramatic decision about uh, what should happen. You know, it looks like there's a lot of thunder over here. So I'm gonna unplug, I am unplugged, right? I'm gonna ask you not to play yours for a moment and I'm gonna come near the end. And what we wanna listen to is what are the last few words and how does it relate to this big tale? of a rainstorm. And the grass below, then it was over.
that thunder couldn't be in a better place. And it looks like I've got about 12 seconds of it, which is pushing my luck a little bit because the, the speaker is only speaking for 30. But you know, what the hell? If we think it's dramatic that it works, we could keep the whole thing. So what I'd like for you to do is make a decision. Um, when you clipped it before, we did it blind. Maybe that wasn't a great idea. Right now, let's just work with what you have. If you want to shorten it some more, you know how to do it. Highlight a little more and press delete. If you like it, but you just want it to fade out, let's return to the fade feature from yesterday. Now, folks, I do want to say something. I've gotten used to some people being very, very quiet. And uh, the, earlier in the class, I was calling people randomly by name just to try to get you involved. Uh, I, I've since decided to let people use their own learning style but please don't hesitate to interrupt me. So I'm gonna go right to the fade out because I actually like the length of that blast of thunder at the end there. And um, I wanna say something I love about the fade feature in this program. When you highlight a certain area, it knows that the beginning of that area is maximum volume and the right side is zero volume. So it actually takes care of the entire reduction of volume until so that's what I want to do now. All right. So you make a decision. Do you want it to start right at the very end? Remember, he actually says over. Branches and the grass below. Then it was over. I like that idea. So what I'm going to do right now is I am going to start, I'm just going to have it fade out uh, right around the time that that blast of sound starts. And I'm judging by the waveform there. Maybe a little bit early. But once I have that whole area highlighted, I'm gonna to go to the effect menu and simply choose fade out. This time I'm gonna let you go first. So once you've done it, I'd like you to listen. The whole thing here is only 45 seconds. Maybe what you should do is listen to the whole thing this time. If 45 seconds takes patience, uh, then you probably shouldn't do sound editing. All right, so I'm gonna be quiet for uh, 45 seconds. All right, I hope you like it. I'd like you to give me a chance to plug in and just hear mine. I'm only gonna listen to the second half because I've heard it before. I have mixed feelings about mine to tell you the truth. And, and part of the reason is, um, like Marissa, I kind of, I feel like I got some noise back, right? Not because of the same error, but when I remixed the sound earlier. And I'm very tempted to go into the voice and do the whole noise reduction routine over. Because while it's raining, I don't hear it. Because rain sounds just like noise, so similar, right? There's a slight gap here where I'm, I could hear one of them dropping out and I'm not really thrilled with that. You know, right now though, I'm gonna let it ride uh, because I'd have to go back a bunch of steps which I don't wanna do in front of a class. But uh, again, it's about how picky you wanna get. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna give this over a 90. Right now I'm gonna accept it. I'll tell you what I think would be cool though, artistically. I think it would be cool if it started with a thunderclap. Now, I want to be careful with that, because if we get crazy, the first thing your listener is going to do is going to be like, <coughs> oh, you know, so I don't want to get crazy. But if you look at the beginning, you can see I've got the pause from, you know, that we know about the beginning of the voice. Uh, and then, you know, so we're hearing rain at the very beginning. Let's see what that sounds like and decide whether adding a thunderclap is a good idea. So I'm going to rewind it. And I'm unplugging. And I'm going to be the guinea pig this time. Last night, the rain spoke to me slowly, saying right. what... So here's my opinion of it. 
The rain doesn't fade in, but that doesn't bother me at all. I think it's kind of cool, actually, just starting like that. It's almost like we opened a window and we could hear the rain. I'm going to leave it. There's enough room for a thunderclap, so I think I'm going to do it. All right? So can you bring your playhead back to the beginning? And as you probably already guessed, file menu, import. Audio. And here we got thunder. And let's click open. Now, before you go any further, right, you want to orient yourself because your screen is probably not showing you all three tracks right now. So I got rain poem up top. I got rainstorm next. Uh, there's a scroll bar on the right side of audacity you might need. And I'm just going to, I see that the brand new track called thunder is selected, but I'm going to take this bar in between them and raise it quite a bit. Uh, you know, so I could see a little bit more of what I'm doing. Just don't forget where you are. You might have to scroll up. You might have to scroll down. So please note that scroll bar on the right. So even uh, without a hell of a lot of work, we could see that there looks like a fairly repeated sound, one, two, three. And um, uh, typically, if you were going to be working on your own and someone delivered assets, I would have previewed that sound before I brought it in So for a moment. I used to do that in Photoshop a lot, show you the photos we had that we were going to use. And I probably should have done that today. So let's stop for one second and let me do that with you. So say you were, um, give me a second there. Say you've just been delivered the assets. You're supposed to design this at home and send it to the next person in the team. I would have gone to each of these like Thunder. And on my Mac, I would just hit spacebar. Does that work on Windows, spacebar previewing? No? So however you do it on Windows, there's many ways. A lot of people on Mac would just double click it. It might open in iTunes. It might open in other programs. Uh, but I'm going to just hit the spacebar. One. I'm predicting three in those 23 seconds. Two. This one must be coming up. All right. I don't want all of that because, frankly, it's a soft kind of poem, really. So I just want this intro. Remember yesterday we kind of protected the drums? Boom, boom before the vocals. <laughs> They're going to use the thunder for a similar kind of like, here I am uh, intro. All right, let's just go back. You already brought it into the timeline. I feel pretty confident that I'm going to want to delete a chunk of it. So I'm coming to the right. And I want to point out, this is where I start talking here. All right, it looks like about three seconds in. I don't mind if that thunder fades out while I'm talking, but I surely don't want the other two blasts. So I'm going to come to the right. And I'm going to highlight the part I want to delete. Do I want to delete those? Do I want to delete a little bit more? I'm going to delete a little bit more because I'm going to fade out that blast anyway. So I'm, I'm focusing on the first bit. I have highlighted the second and third clap, thunderclap, and I'm hitting delete. Now, I don't want to fade out yet until I've explored the volume issue. Right? And I, again, I don't think we need the envelope tool from yesterday for this. I'm going to use gain again. But first, I'm going to rewind it. I'm going to be the guinea pig again. I am unplugged. Last night, the rain spoke to me All right. slowly. Saying it's safe to joy. say that's wildly loud, and I need to fade it out. If you agree, you know how to do it. Make sure you're plugged in, right? Play it, and while you're playing it, Take the gain slider and reduce it till it sounds right. So I'm going to stop for a second. I'm going to do it after you this time. Um, so that's the best way to do it. I hope you guys are ready. I, here's my opinion of it. I, the, the initial thunderclap, I want to sound reasonable while my speaker's set to halfway. 
but also I want to make sure it's low enough as that thunderclap finishes that it doesn't interrupt the first few words of the poem. So I'm going to really have to reduce, reduce the volume. Give me a moment. I wound up being at minus 20. Uh, we're all, again, we have different ears. We have different ways of seeing and hearing, right? I like it because it's still rather dramatic uh, it without being alarming and the, the uh, poem is smooth. But the right side on mine ends sadly and I'm gonna have to do a fade out. So you probably remember how to do that. First, you start by selecting the area you'd like to fade out. Right, and um, you know you're gonna have to just trust yourself on on that one. How much you want? If it's too small, they're gonna sense the volume dropping unnaturally. So you don't really want that fade to be too quick. It's got to be long enough where the person is sort of just accepting it. So I'm highlighting a bunch, and I'm gonna do effect menu, fade out. All right. If you've already done your fade and you've adjusted the gain, right, uh, for your thunder track, I'd like you to rewind and see how the whole thing feels. And um, it's, again, it's only under a minute, so I'm going to be quiet while you test it out. All right, I wanna listen to mine, make sure that I'm not giving bad advice because you can only tell by listening. I just plugged myself in again. Uh, so even people on YouTube are hearing my volume change a, a lot. It's a little awkward, but it's working. So I'm, I'm content. So, you know, um, I want to show you some special effects. Before I do that, though, I want to say one thing. You know, I was telling you before that the tail end of the poem irritates me. I could actually hear it uh, disappearing and I could try to flatten the noise on the right side again. But I was just thinking, I think given the rain background, if I just fade out this flat area, um, no one's going to notice. It'll just sort of submerge into the atmospheric sound, the ambient sound. So I'm gonna quickly do that. And uh, if you're having issues when you listen closely with the way the poem ends, you could do the same if you want. And here's a little demo of it. So I'm um, just dragging these things down so I could see a little bit better. Um, I'm back, back here on the poem itself. And it's this little bit here that's bothering me. So I'm just gonna highlight that. It's this after that last word, over. Right, he says the last word over. This is that tail end. And I'm just gonna use a fade out. So I'm pretty sure now I'm not even gonna sense it. Give me a second to double check. And then I wanna show you some, something more odd, some unusual stuff.
Ah, that was pretty good. I'm a little happier about it now. All right. Um, you know, I want to, as I said, do some special effects. I'm going to start with the voice. But before we do that, uh, since we should have saved already, I want to do a proper save now. Uh, I will save again when we're ready to export, because at the end, I always save, then export. But I want to do an early save, which is far more prudent. So let's go to the file menu and um, go to save project. And I want to say here, save project and save project as should be the same right now. These have different purposes once you've already saved. Once you've already saved, save project just means update the current one, wherever I put it, whatever I called it. In the future, if I wanted a second version, I'd go to save project as, you know, call it, you know, rain poem version two. Right now, let's just use save project because it's never been saved before. I'm hoping that you're seeing today's folder. If not, find it. I'm hoping that you see .aup for Audacity project here, which only reflects the bottom where it says file type. And that's the only choice there is. Rain poem unedited, however, is a very bad name. So I'm gonna ask you to change the name. This is very much edited. So I'm gonna do rain poem. I could call it rain poem enhanced or rain poem finished you know, something like that. So I'm gonna call it Rain Poem Enhanced. Uh, to be honest with you, I would usually put the date on it, but you don't have to. And this is only gonna be, oh, this is only gonna work for people who have Audacity at this point. All right, let's click Save. All right. How is everyone? Okay, thank you. Uh, let me just double check the chats. All right, um, excellent. You know, it's, it's easier than yesterday and it wasn't that hard yesterday, right? You could imagine if you did this three, four days in a row, you, you, you know, you would need the handout. You'd just be like, ooh, flying through it. What else can we do, right? So um, I wanna talk about the voice for a minute. One of, one of my objections to the voice the voice is not responding to any type of space. Um, is this a small room? Is this an auditorium? Uh, I mean, a canyon. So it feels still a little artificial to me without um, a little bit of the room. So again, I'm not talking about room tone and I'm not even really talking about echo, but it's related to echo. Um, flat out echo where it's like, so listen, I want to talk, I want to talk, I want to talk, I want to, that's going to be very irritating. But if there's a slight reverberation afterwards, reverberation is commonly just called reverb, right? And it's very common on electric instruments. I'd like to, and, and vocals. So let's give it a little reverb, see how that goes. This is, this, uh, I don't usually do this here, uh, but I'm going to do it today. So join me. All right. I am suggesting this only on the actual poem, right? So you wanna make sure you're not down here on the thunder. It really doesn't need it. It has its own echo equality from nature. A rainstorm is the same. I wanna come up to this one, which was recorded in uh, my house, in, uh, in a room that really doesn't have much of a, of a sound quality to it. Could you please highlight the whole track? Don't do Command A because I don't want you to highlight the other tracks. Just this track. All right. I'd like you to join me by going to the effect menu. Now, for the, the adventurous, on another day, you could try a lot of these. A lot of these are truly very, very interesting. All right. The one that I want to point out right now is the reverb feature. So let's see. Do, 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 do. Here it is, reverb. So let's click on it. Now guys, this feature is gonna take a little while to play with, right? And um, um, I think I'm gonna mute myself so that I could plug in my headphones uh, while you play with it. But first, I wanna suggest a few things. 
the room size um, may be large. It's going to create a lot of echo. Let me preview for you at, at, at these current numbers. Last night, the rain spoke to me. No, not really. I, I adjusted it earlier today. Hey, um, can one of you guys tell me what numbers are you seeing when you first get here? Five for room size. Five? Uh, 75. 75. Got it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to change that. I want to ask you about another one. What are you getting for this one, reverberance? 50. 50? So I'm, um, those in damping are probably, you know, I would say reverberance and room size are probably the first ones I'd look at. So I'm going to preview it. Last night, the rain spoke to me. <laughs> it's fun, you know, but I, I don't think it's going to work. You know what I mean? I don't think it's going to work. So I'm going to change that room size so that it's not that huge. And I'm going to go down quite a bit. I'm going to set it down to 50 and I'm going to preview. Last night, the rain spoke to me. It's possible that the reverberance itself should also be reduced. So I'm going to cut that down by half. Last night, the rain spoke to me. You could tell I'm getting closer. So I just want to say to everybody in here, this is a lot of features and I'm not an expert on all of these. I do use reverb. It's usually just one dial. Uh, if you do, if you're if you're playing something live, uh, here it really breaks it down. I'm interested enough in reverb that I will visit the Audacity manual uh, online and, and get a breakdown and see which of these that I want. But if um, these are the current numbers that I have for room size and for reverberance, I'm not saying that they're the best. I'm going to take a little a little. I'm going to adjust it a little bit. I am going to mute myself while people explore this and use the preview button. To find out what they like. So we'll give ourselves an, a minute or two. At the moment, um, given what I'm after, I'm pretty happy with the numbers you're seeing. I've only changed room size and reverberance. And what I've got was something that won't steal anyone's attention, but makes that voice exist in a space. Now, on the other hand, you might be aiming for something bluntly dreamy, you know, and you could exaggerate these features. So right now, uh, personally, I'm just trying to create a space around the voice. You know, every time I talk about this, I start to hear the room. And I didn't even notice my, my tiny room here is only 10 by 10 feet, uh, but I'm facing a wall and I could hear it. You know, I could actually hear it now. And I, I want that kind of believable quality. I like these numbers. I'm gonna keep them and I'm gonna click okay. All right, I'm gonna ask everybody once you're done with it to listen to the whole thing or at least half of it to see how it all fits. And then we're going to do one more really wild thing to that voice, right? So I'm going to mute myself. Pretty happy with it. You know, again, I'm picky and I imagine a lot of you guys are. As you, the more you do, the more you imagine what you might do. All right, I want to do one more thing with this just for the fun of it. I mentioned a feature yesterday and then I thought, you know, let's just do it. What if you're recording alone, right? And your voice is not the voice you imagine for this particular purpose. 
you know, you want something uh, more grave or, or silly. I've gone in both directions. I've, I've used my own voice sounding like a chipmunk. So right now I'm gonna go the opposite road. I'm gonna give it some drama. Not quite God talking, but I'm heading in that direction. All right, if you're interested in trying pitch shift, all right, highlight just the voice track again. So again, if you're seeing them all right now, because of the way you have your screen arranged, you know, just be careful that you're getting the one you mean. This is the track that says ring poem over here. So I've highlighted the whole thing and I'm gonna to go to the effect menu. So again, you do have to highlight it. And I am going to effect. And what I'm looking for is pitch shift. Or unless it's called something else, let me just back up. Change pitch. So it's toward the top. Change pitch. I'm going to click it. So look again, I'm just exposing you to ideas. There are a million options in every one of these, you know, so uh, it's going to be rare to find a full time audacity user. It's really used as a kind of a tool in a tool set. So I'm going to recommend you try this one out. Um, and again, I'm going to mute myself. What you want to do is, uh, you know, notice the original minus five. So try it way over here, preview. Try it way over here, preview. And figure out what you want out of it today as you feel the options available. So I'm going to mute myself. So again, that was change pitch. You have to highlight your track. I'm plugging in. Mute. I'm going with minus 18 for myself. Uh, it makes a believable voice. It just doesn't sound like me. I don't think people that know me would recognize the voice, but it doesn't sound digitally manipulated, uh, which is um, very fine trickery. Uh, when I got much lower than this, I definitely sounded like a demon from hell reading rain poems, <laughs> you know, which is, you know, would be perfect for a different recitation. You know, but right now I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to click OK. And, uh, you know, one thing that comes to mind is, I'm, you know, these days I've used my voice, my own voice, uh, the most. So, um, you know, my family's volunteered. Um, their voices are much higher pitch than mine. So I don't know how that went uh, for you guys. Which way you went? Did you go up in the high helium range? You know. So I hope that you like something about it. I'm going to ask everyone to take a moment to see how their whole package fits. And then I want to export. So um, I'm going to do the same.
I'm clicking like a madman. <laughs> and it's only Tuesday. Um, all right. I want you to give a listen to this one, and I hope uh, the quality on your end is, is manageable. Last night, Lorraine spoke to me slowly, saying what joy to come forward out of the brisk cloud to be happy again in a new way on the earth. That's what it said as it dropped, smelling of iron, and vanished like a dream of the ocean into the branches and the grass below. Then it was over. Sounds like me. <laughs> Sounds like Pavarotti, if you ever heard of him. Um, big singer, big guy, singer. All right, I'm... Um, wanted to say a couple quick things about this. You know, one thing I like about this type of exercise is it really kind of opens the door to some um, opportunities for you, if you like this, to experiment. Uh, most of us in this room have favorite songs and uh, some, some of you like, might like poetry or even political uh, readings, uh, you know, right now. There's some very relevant um, spoken word poetry uh even who who did the revolution will not be televised does anybody know that piece the revolution will not be televised do you know it marissa that sounds so familiar it's great it's truly great uh by a new yorker an african-american from new york uh, who, whose words were just almost too powerful considering the moment i think he'd be glad at, at how televised it's getting <laughs> the, the current efforts anyway, to revolutionize what's backwards in our culture. Um, anyway, though, if you're interested in this, part of the ticket would be, and I want to go on to recording, you know, what I could, what I could share with you about how to record yourself, but you might want to then say, okay, what would augment this? You know, what other sounds? And then you, you do searches for free MP3s or just free sound effects and find the sounds you'd like to incorporate. That's how I found the thunder and that's how I found the rain. I always do searches like, I include the word free usually. So I'll do like free audio MP3. Also allow me to just point out this um, feature of uh, this element on the handout, which I mentioned yesterday. So I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it. Give me a second here. These sounds came uh, from OpSound. And you know, those of you here yesterday, it was pretty funny that OpSound had a note to someone on their team, Sal, that said uh, it's, they're, they're, they're offline. So I'm gonna take that off unless they bring it back online. That's sad, I liked OpSound, but there's lots of them. Free play music, I just found recently, so I don't wanna comment on it. I did like the music I got from them. The only thing is, is sometimes I just want effects and they won't be on a music website. You know, if you, if you need crying or whatever you need or applause. So you have to do clever, uh, you know, take the time to collect your assets. I wanna talk to you a little bit about recording. Um, I've never talked about this before to a group because it can't be done in the classroom. There's no way to do it. We didn't even have mics in the classroom. So this is new to me, <laughs> right? But um, there's really not that much to know. So uh, let's take a look together. I'd like you to go back to Audacity, and before we move further, let's um, save it again. So just plain old file menu save, right? Save project in this case, it's Command S like it is in other programs, because you named it and you already gave it a folder. So you could just use Command S or Control S. And all that means is back in the folder, um, it's just updated, it's 1136, so it knows that it's current up to 1136, which is great. This is the Audacity project that you'd open again. If you were gonna deliver this to somebody, you'd give them this and this. But to be honest with you, I would also give them all the original parts. So I'd give them a copy of my root folder is what I typically do. But it might be enough just to have the AUP in the data folder. I'd really have to think about it. In most programs, there remains to be links to the original audios, but some embed the data. Safest is give them all the parts. All right, so we saved. Can we export before we move on to the next uh, and last subject of the day? So let's go to the file menu. 
just make sure you're back in um, Audacity. I was not. Then go to the file menu, export. And again, export is MP3. It's probably the most useful format right now. There's not a lot to know here. Just make sure you still like the name, that it indeed does say MP3, and that you're happy with where you're putting it. And I'm using the root folder for everything. So this MP3 could be sent to anybody. I'm going to click Save. It's telling me that it's going to be, the, that copy is one track. That's fine. Uh, this is metadata, hidden information, which I don't use. So in other words, just OK your way through it. After that, in your folder, you'll see the MP3. This is the most important file for delivery. I'd bring this into Premiere if I'm going to use it in a video or into Animate for an animation, or I'd email it to someone, or I'd put it on my iPhone in iTunes as part of my music collection, but this is it. All right, before I talk about recording, does anybody have any questions about saving or export? Right, it gets sort of obvious after a while. You know, Photoshop, we saved the PSD and we exported to JPEG. And there's always some version of that idea. The original file we call the authoring file is saved for the artist or the team. And then the exported output file goes on its merry way out into the world, right? About recording, let's see how this goes. All right, this project's been properly saved. So you can go to the file menu and choose close to close it, knowing that it's current, right? If you're not sure, right, then save project. Uh, if it's gray, it means you just saved it. If it's not, you didn't, so save it again. Right, and then close it. So you notice it looks pretty darn weird once you close a project. There's just two little menus up there. One says Audacity and one says File. Can you go to the File menu and choose New? So we've got an empty stage, so to speak. Did I lose anybody? No. This class is sort of a perfect length, a two hour class. I've taught all kinds of lengths for this school. This is ideal. All right, I wanna point out a couple things. We need to change some settings before we could record. The big red button is obviously gonna be a record button, right? But we can't jump right into it. So I wanna point something out. Could you find this feature on, on Audacity? Now, since we all just loaded the newest version, your tools are probably in the same place as mine. So this looks like an old fashioned microphone. Not this one down here, just this one. Now, guys, this is going to get a little weird, so I'm going to ask everyone not to do this until I show you something, right? So don't click anything just yet, just look. I'm going to click that button, and it asks me to start monitoring. Now, what does that mean? It means it's not going to record, but it's going to let me change what we call my input levels. So if I set that too high, the input's going to rattle like crazy, and there's not going to be a way to fix it. If I set it too low, whisper level, when I try to fix it, I'm never going to get a proper sound quality out of it, right? So I want to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to click. So I click the little microphone. I click start monitoring. It's monitoring. And right now it's whistling at me. There's all kinds of red. This is not good. So what I got to do is come here. This is the input volume. Huh. Sorry, guys. I'm whistling like a bunch of space aliens at your house. I'm going to lower this. Testing. One. That's still high. I don't know why. I'm going to lower this down. Testing. One, two. I would like it to get closer to zero, but I'm getting a lot of feedback. I'm going to have to go with this and see how it goes. All right. I'm going to click on this and say stop monitoring. I did my best to set. If I'm seeing a lot of red, this is the slider that goes down. And this is way to the left, which is really making me worry. Right, I just got this version um, two days ago, so I haven't had a chance to do a lot of recording in it. So I may have to look around and see if that's a problem. I'm going to be a guinea pig right now, though, and actually record myself and see how this goes. And then I'm going to leave it, leave it to you for, for a bit. All right, I did my best to set it. I'm going to click the red button right now. I don't know if it has something to do with Zoom. I don't think it does. I'm going to click the red button. All right. Uh, 
Will that whistle all come out? There's my waveform. I should have waited a little bit for the room tone, the noise. One, two, all right. I'm gonna click that button again. Uh, oh, sorry, click the stop button. This looks weird, choppy, makes me nervous. All right, I'm gonna rewind it. Let's see what we got. All right, something is definitely wrong that your teacher's gonna have to look up. Uh, uh, oh, wait a second. I know what just happened. Give me a minute. I'm gonna select all and I'm gonna delete it. This is gonna be weird because I need my headphones for this. I do believe what was just happening, we'll see if I'm right, I could be wrong, was my speaking was also coming out the speaker so it was doubling over and giving me feedback. This is one of the reasons people always record with headphones. Well, let's see. All right. So this is, I realize the volume gets weird. One. Aha. Still allowed here. One, two, three. I want to come close, but when I shout, that's red, that's not so good. I don't tend to shout though. So if I'm over, I'm around minus six, they, people say that's good, right? If it keeps hitting here, that's the ceiling. You don't like that. That's why it shows you red there. One, two, I think I'm pretty good. I'm gonna turn it off. All right, now I'm gonna record. One, two, three, four. I wanna do a better, by including the room tone moment. So I said before you should probably wait about three seconds before you talk, but I didn't do it. One, two, three, A, B, C, D, hello, goodbye. <laughs> so this is the room tone, right? You know what I would do with this, right? I'm going to highlight it, get my noise profile, clean it up, start building it. But right now, just unplugged again, by the way. One, two, three, A, B, C, D. Hello. Good. It's, it takes so much of the bass out of my voice, I got to return it. Uh, but just for the record. Um, not bad. Did any of you guys already try that while I was talking? No? So um, let me just repeat the highlights, right? And uh, I'm not going to demo it. I'm just going to kind of point. First step is click this microphone and set it to start monitoring. Make sure your headphones are in, mine are not, right? You're going to lower this with your headphones in, right? until you're not hearing any kind of weird feedback and you're making sure that this, you know, doesn't get too high when you shout, right? Zero is the maximum, but minus six is often recommended. That's just to get the levels of this slider though. So once you find that slider, come over here and stop monitoring. So the slider's set, then you're actually ready to record. So at that point, Simply hit the red button, wait three seconds so you have a little bit of area to get your noise profile and talk. I'm gonna shut up for anyone who wants to try it while we're still together, right? Or you're all muted so you don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna mute mine so I don't make anything worse.
So folks, uh, I want to say that's probably one of the most awkward ways to teach recording, but it's better than what we had in the classroom where I couldn't teach you how to record at all. I pretty much send everyone to a link online. There was just no way to do it in the classroom. Um, if you're interested in knowing more about how to record voice, uh, I, I don't generally say this, but I would check the manual or I would just do a search Audacity record voice, you know, or start recording. There are options that you may need to change and there's too many people in the class to go over it. I just wanna give you a peek at a couple of options that a long tutorial would go into. One, it would ask you to look here first to see what you've got. Usually it's set to built-in microphone and that's what I'm focusing right now, the computer mic. But if you have a fancy microphone, right, and have learned how to plug it into your computer, it would also show up on this list, right? Uh, this built-in output here is just the volume coming out of your speaker, uh, rather it's telling where it's coming out of, and it goes with this slider here, which is what you're hearing, has no effect on the recording at all, either of these. Um, I, I want to, uh, let me know, you know, maybe tomorrow, if any of you recorded successfully, if you did anything with it, because um, I'd be curious to know. You know, uh, it's a, there's a lot of different computers here, that, so I'm really not sure. I know sometimes I've had to go to the Audacity menu to preferences um, when things go wrong, and I visit recording uh, to see if there's anything here that needs to be messed with. Really, actually, the biggest issue I've ever seen is up here in devices where this is set wrong. It's pretty much the same as this feature. Anyway, let me stop. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up, uh, but I do wanna say a couple quick things to you. So what's the deal with all this? I've done a lot with mixed sounds where I got the source material from the web uh, a real lot in that way without recording at all. Uh, and I think that's very common or has been common uh, since most of us don't have fancy um, recording equipment. Uh, I've been encouraging people though to change that climate because these mics are not bad that are on most of your computers. Uh, it is interesting that my room that I'm in right now is one of the quietest rooms in my house. And damn, was there a lot of noise when I just recorded. When I'm quiet, For the life of me, this room's like a house in the country right now. But there was still noise. So all those steps are still necessary. Does anybody have any questions for me about sound, sound editing, audacity? I had a question. Dude, Jonathan. Why the heck do I hate my voice? Why do you hate your voice? Everybody hates their own voice. Uh, the other weird thing, isn't it? It's almost always true. Everybody hates their own voice. I don't know why that is. One is you're not hearing what I'm hearing. Uh, because for one, you're hearing all this, all the way it resonates with your bone structure and your body, and your earbuds are right next to them, and I'm not, I'm just hearing projected sound. Uh, but the other thing is, if you hate your own voice, <laughs> use audacity and make it a voice you like. You know what I mean? Uh, I, really, uh, I've yet to make my voice sound completely like a woman's, but my, my voice is flexible. I, I believe I could do that, you know, uh, fairly well. Uh, I have a fairly androgynous voice that gives me some room, you know, but I haven't yet tried it. I'd, I'd like to do that in, in a believable way. I've done the opposite, like I did today with this, you know, tough guy voice. <laughs> but yeah, I think everybody feels that way. Any other uh, comments about it? Look, anyway, we're all in quarantine, but you, if you're going to be doing more of this, listen to your friends closely. I, I've literally used, uh, I would say off the top of my head, maybe like eight people that I know for their voices. Not just for their voices, the current characters, but one guy just for his voice. This guy, I'm not even sure how much I like this guy. He's one of those people who never votes. It gets me mad, but he's got this voice. What's that? How would the remote for your TV be here? Psych. <laughs> Andy, are, are, you, are you talking to me or family? Oh, I'm sorry. Oops. <laughs> Hello for me. 
Hi. <laughs> All right, guys. There's no questions for me. All right. I want to just say about what's happening next. As much as I love this subject, that really is as much that's appropriate for this particular class. Um, I would like to tell you, though, in MMP 100, because I think there's a lot of us teaching it, um, some classes are more about sound theory, and I wouldn't mind sitting in on one of those, you know, more about what is a decibel, and how do you break down amplitude, and, and what exactly do those waveforms mean, and how many hertz should output be, and um, that kind of thing. Um, and, and I personally don't like doing that, because I feel like that's more appropriate when someone does more audio. You know, they're going into this uh, as, their, as their foremost career choice, um, which I've not done. Um, you know, in all fairness, I recorded two albums that I never released. And they're, you know, really, they're, uh, the weakest part was I needed a better producer than I am. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm decent. Uh, but I would need someone who was really uh, hardcore about it. So uh, right now I chose to do a hands-on thing more to make it useful uh, for a variety of the majors and also just more fun for everybody. So if there are no more questions about it, I just want to say a couple minutes about tomorrow and uh, also a little heads up about uh, one day where class is going to be canceled uh, this, this coming Monday. Uh, class will be canceled and I will definitely give you notice um, both tomorrow and Thursday to remind people. I'll probably send out an alert to everyone's email address. Uh, there's uh, a, 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 an, an event that's unavoidable, uh, which we will resume on Tuesday. And I promise you'll get all the good stuff that I plan to give you that you won't be uh, shortchanged. Tomorrow starts video. And um, like my class tends to do, it's a hands-on subject. So we're going to actually make um, a tiny movie. And the, the first one is going to feel quite a bit like a commercial. It's going to be about the length of a commercial. Uh, and we're going to use some um, high-quality footage just to learn what the basics are of how you assemble a movie, or we like to say how you cut a movie. And uh, then the next day, uh, Thursday, uh, I want to take on one many times the size. It's going to be about two and a several minutes long. Um, they're, they're lengthy. Uh, they're not for everybody. It takes patience to do it well. Uh, I think we'll have fun doing it together. And then I think I'm going to do a third day where we can start the homework, uh, the one video project, which is, um, uh, again, going to be very friendly. You know, if you've got the software, uh, you sh you'll obviously have the will. Uh, I think some of you are going to be punch drunk with the sheer joy of video editing. It's really one of my favorite art forms, um, in which I'll have a lot to say about tomorrow, so I'm going to save you today. Other than I'd like to say that every movie you've ever loved, uh, the video editor was the unsung hero of that movie. We, we talk about everybody, but the video editor, who's got to be one of the biggest players, there have been movies that just tanked according to the director, Woody Allen, uh, one of the most famous American directors, uh, his most famous movie was called Annie Hall. And uh, once they shot everything and got the first edit down, he hated it. And, and he was very close with his editor. And the editor said, you know, Woody, I just think we have to rethink the movie. I have a hunch about how this movie should have been cut. And it's pretty much rearranging the whole script. And he won every award in the book for that second edit. And really, he, I hope he walked up on stage with the editor to collect those awards. So uh, tomorrow, we'll see what that's like. If someone gets the same footage and there are 100 editors, you're going to get 100 different movies out of the same exact footage. So that's going to be fun. Uh, so please, uh, do your best to make sure you have I know some. Did any of you already get it, already have Premiere? Yeah. People, right? And it was easy, right, to get it? I figured. So tomorrow, Adobe Premiere. All right. If there are no last questions for me, I think I'm going to head out today. I want to, uh, really, I've taken too long to grade anything. Uh, a student asked me in the most mature way uh, because he, he can't come to class. So he really feels like, man, all I've got is the grades to know that I'm really participating. So I got to get busy with it. I'm going to do the first project this afternoon. Uh, I'm going to wait 
and not grade the midterms because they're not technically due till tomorrow. Um, a last word for anyone listening. Please let me know if you need more time. Uh, I just want to know why, and I want to make sure that it's you're grounded in our time frame. Because, uh, to be frank, the first project was only worth 15% of the grade. Um, the midterms were 35%. Why? Well, really, it covered both the code and Photoshop. So it's got a double size percentage uh, of all those skills. So it's 35% of the grade. Um, so again, if you haven't already, please get it to me. I'm going to ask for last questions and then take off. You have a chat, Professor. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, Crystal, thank you, Crystal, for recommending the Paris Review uh, podcast. You know, I just want to say a quick word. Paris Review is a, is a magazine, a highly literary, smarty pants magazine that I haven't read a lot, but I have to admit, I absolutely loved uh, when I read it. It was so Yeah, thoughtful. I know. What's that? Yeah, I know. I have like so many issues of it in my house. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and they really talked about some of my favorite movies with the insiders who knew everything that had happened and uh, all kinds of um, cultural stuff. I'm, I'm glad you enjoy that, Crystal. I didn't know they had a podcast. Um, I'm just fascinated by the world of podcasts. And, and now that I kind of know myself uh, how to actually do it, um, I, I often wonder what would I do if I was doing my own podcast? You know, frankly, it wouldn't be this. I love doing this. You know, I'm not lying to you. I just love doing this. But I have a whole other thing to say to the world <laughs> that's not really about software at all. It is about being creative and a, a very long adventure that I've learned from that proves to me how creativity transforms a life, especially when it needs transformation, when you lose someone or, or when your culture is letting you down a large scale like it has been doing or whatever. So I really like to talk about that. But yeah, wow, well, the Paris Review podcast. I'm going to mention it to my family because they're also fans of it. Thanks for the tip, Crystal. What yeah, the mean? audio is just like superb. I, I was very surprised by it. Really? Wow. Yeah. You know, they use great mics. So I don't, I don't, I have a, I don't know. I haven't been recording a hell of a lot lately, to be honest. All my equipment's not here. But um, usually people have similar setups that you already have, but they'll buy one really good mic. And um, you might need a special interface because they don't have the jacks uh, like computer mics have, you know, a, a special interface. But these things could be had for under a hundred bucks. The interface you could find some for under a hundred bucks. A mic. I use a mic called a Shure mic, S U R E, uh, which was the rock and roll mic of the 1970s. So my mic I got mostly from music originally. But they have a lot of these uh, old fashioned radio mics you'll see people online. <laughs> You want to learn about mics? You know, they put stands on them, and um, it will it will kind of record all kind of the details within your voice. Things you things, Jonathan, you can't hear. But one of the reasons we all hate our own voice, uh, but it lets you learn what to capitalize on. You know, it wasn't until I started using my voice for anything that I realized. Actually, it was a guy who did voice stuff came into a grocery store once and said, "You know, we could use your voice." But actually talk to me about it. Later on, when I started doing similar stuff, I was like, you know, I might as well. Um, uh, so, yeah, th there's a lot of ramping up, at least with men in podcasts, there's a lot of ramping up of the base. I'd, be, I'd really be interested to hear someone talk about that. You know, not to be all 20th century about it, but, to, you know, is, is there typically a way to flatter a woman's voice that's different? You know, I don't know. I mean, you know, there's a fashion of voice. You watch TV, uh, there's a lot of women with this husky kind of voice. Uh, my wife loves this show called Madam Secretary. And I was kidding her the other day that she sounds like female Batman. You know, Batman, how he always talks. You know, it's very alarming. She's like, yes, I would like orange juice with my eggs. <laughs> you know, so she sounds like that. So I, I, I think they're probably messing with the bass in her voice too. Well, yeah, Crystal, thanks for the tip. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know one thing I mentioned yesterday, um, welcome to Night Vale. And what interests me to when people do fiction as a podcast is so you're dealing with two or three actors, 
uh, which would be a challenge. Uh, one could do it on the cheap and record the actors separately. You know, they would have to be pretty good actors because they're not really reacting to anybody. Uh, but then they mix it in with all those other sounds. I mean, especially, these surreal ones are so crazy. Welcome to Night Vale, uh, being a town, Night Vale. Uh, their ideas are so odd. Like at random, there's a cat that flies, in, that floats in this bathroom. <laughs> and, and they just keep on mentioning the cat in passing, this floating cat. Why? I, I don't know. But it's very strange, very entertaining, and um, great way to listen, learn and listen. You know, I want to say something, just one last thing about it, since we're going into video tomorrow. Um, I've long been a fan of sound design from movies and TV, uh, but they fall into two categories. There's sound design and soundtrack, or like we say, the score. So, and they're often not the same person. The, a musician writes the score, he's writing music for that. He waits for the scene to be shot and edited and then writes music to it, um, with either live musicians or not. And I, I've been fortunate enough to have made one movie with, with a professional um, sound um, score writer, guy who writes soundtracks. And then he actually also did the sound design. So let me just skip for a minute to that idea. So the sound design for a movie includes at least two things that I'd like to mention. One is recording on set. So for example, if it's at a bar and uh, people are putting their drinks down, they got to decide whether that sounds important or not. And, and if it is, they might use a table mic. It's this cool thing. It, it sits on the table and it's designed to get all the vibrations from the table. Or do they need a wireless mic or all these different kinds of things? And um, in some cases, they have to throw that sound out completely. So if they're talking outside, they're usually they have to throw the sound out completely. And then they do this thing called uh, automatic, uh, it's called ADR, automatic dialogue replacement, I'm pretty sure. And there's nothing automatic about it. The, 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 the actors are literally watching their own mouths move later on and they know their lines because they're professional actors and they're saying it in the exact same way they did on the set but this time they're in a, in a sound stage as though they're doing an animation uh you ever see two people talking in a convertible you know the cars without a hood that had to be there's no way to mic that no way that i could imagine so it's done completely afterwards i We're actually had to a fan what's that if you're near a fan absolutely talking into a fan that's what it sounds like. I used to love doing that. <laughs> and just imagine how that would destroy a movie. So ADR is, uh, like I said, it's not automatic. It's literally seasoned actors watching their own mouth movements and, and repeating it. You know, right now, people who know how to do that are doing it to make fun of uh, the president. And if any of you love this president, um, I'll be polite. But I just want to say those people have got so used to the way his mouth moves um, that they could actually do it. Uh, there's this one woman uh, who uh, makes believe she's drunk in a bar saying all the things he says. And uh, it, it's very funny because you could accept someone saying this drunk in a bar. Then you're like, wait a second, that was said at a press conference <laughs> by the leader of the free world, uh, sort of. But, um, you know, again, I have to be fair. There are people who may see something that I don't. And I'm a teacher, so I got to make room for that as well as I can. Anyway, tomorrow's video, so more time-based sequence. After that, uh, probably animation. So we're really working in time. The second half of this semester is all time-based media. Uh, personal favorite stuff for me. All right, folks. I see a lot of you guys stuck around today after 12, where, where you're allowed to escape at will. Um, <laughs> I'll see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow should be good. And again, if, if, remember, these are all videotaped. You know, a couple of you are so diligent about being here every day that they send me these very alarmed emails. I, I can't come tomorrow for whatever reason, which I appreciate, actually. It's very human. But the way this class is designed, you're allowed to take it how you want, in person, you know, or not. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow morning. It's been fun. Sala, Jessica, Faik, Andy, Emmanuel. Jeremy? Have a good day. Thank you. Lisa? John? <laughs> Arrivederci. I love doing that. All right. Arrivederci. Good one, Professor. <laughs> bye, bye bye. Adios. Shalom, etc. Peace. Peace. By all means.